Hi, it's Vicky here and welcome back. Today, just like I promised, I'm going to use the trick or treat C6 die and I'm going to open it up for you so you can see what you get. So this is the main part with all the kids in a row. You also get the trick or treat sentiment and a little pat. I'm going to bring in my Big Shot machine so that I can start cutting out and today I'm going to use cardstock from the 8x8 uh, Tim Holtz paper pad. I picked up the black and I'm going to run it through my scissors with the main part of the die as well as the butt. Now as always you can find links on all the products that I'm using down below in the description area as well as on, the blog, uh, on my blog and I also link you to both US and European shops where you can get them. Now as you can see the die is quite big so I'm going to bring in a standard sized card and it's going to cover up the whole front face. Now I'm also going to bring in one of the Tim Holtz uh, vignette houses so you can see that it's uh, super easy to use them as a decorative element if you wish to create something mixed media. So it's quite big. Now I'm going to continue cutting and I need to cut out my sentiment. I'm going to start cutting it out from the black cardstock again and then I'm going to use the pad that I have already on my table and I'm going to pick three different colors that are all Halloween colors. So I'm going to go with orange, with purple and green. And the idea is to cut out the sentiment using those three different colors of cardstock so that I can end up mixing and matching the words at the end for my sentiment. And now all I'm doing is just cutting out the sentiment using the three different colors of cardstock. Now I have brought in the two cards that I have already made with the other dies by Sizzix and Tim Holtz. And since I'm going for a set of three, cards I want to keep pretty much the same idea on uh, the design but uh, this time instead of using uh, a blue and purple background I'm going to create something different so that you can see how you can play with different colors for your background but I'm going to stick to the main idea so again I am going to have a moon at the background and again just like I did with the first card I'm going to cut it out of masking paper using a circle die I placed the mask on top of my cardstock and I'm working on a watercolor paper and uh, now I'm going to start uh, adding color for my sky. I'm using my blending tool. I started with fossilized amber and now I moved on to spiced marmalade. As you can see I'm applying the color quite saturated as I want it to be very dark and notice that I am keeping the lighter color closer to the moon so this is going to give the illusion that the moon is glowing when I remove the paper now I'm going to do something that is a no-go in terms of um, color combination but uh, this works really beautifully just because I'm using Distress Oxide inks and that's applying purple on top of orange and uh, the color I am using is uh, Wilted Violet but uh, it works beautifully in this case and that's just because the formulation of oxide inks works in such a way so although it allows the ink to be blended super easy at the same time the second layer always stays on top of the first one and I'm happy with how my background looks at the moment so I'm going to give it a quick hit with my heat gun just making sure that all the ink is totally dry before I move on to the next uh, step my heat gun is going to blow away the masking paper and so the reveal has been done and I am really happy with how that looks. Now I'm going to add a little bit of black suit at the edges and this is going to bring everything together as if it is a night sky. Now as I'm doing that I need to be extra careful since my moon doesn't have a masking paper on top at the moment and that's why I'm just covering it up with a post-it note. And again I'm going to use the same technique as I did for the first card that I shared using these dies and I'm going to add uh, some water on my moon in different areas and then I'm going to apply a little bit of yellow. By the way this is the same yellow that I used for my background, Distress Oxide Ink and that's Fossilized Amber. So I ended up having a beautiful background using the same techniques as I did for the rest of the other cards and that uh, makes all three cards come together in the same set but at the same time they don't look alike. 
Now, this panel is four and a quarter by five and a half, so if uh, you leave it as it is, it would cover up completely a standard card, but I decided to cut out about an eighth of an inch from each side, and this way I will end up having a border uh, at the end. Now, I have a black strip of paper, that's the same cardstock as the one that I used for cutting out all my silhouettes. I'm going to decide about how far I want this silhouette to go. So I'm going to stick that at the bottom. Now I'm going to use my scissors to cut off the excess. And then I'm going to stick all those kits on top. Now I'm using uh, white glue at the back and that's uh, Nouveau Deluxe. I don't apply too much uh, glue at the back since uh, I don't want this to come out from the back when I squeeze the die cut on top of my panel. But I love using white glue just because it gives me the ability to, to slide uh, the die cut a little bit until I'm happy with the placement. I'm going to place something heavy there just to make sure that this is going to bond nicely. And I'm going to stick the butt and then start working on my sentiment. I'm using my scissors to separate all three words so I will end up having trick or and treat in uh, separated words in all three different colors. And this way I can play around a little bit with all those color combinations to decide how I want my sentiment to look. And now I have the black base for the sentiment and this is where I'm going to stick everything so the sentiment can come together on top of that. And this is going to allow for a thicker sentiment so when I place it on top of my card it will have some dimension. I am using again my white glue and I'm going to stick all those little words in different colors. And then I'm going to stick that at the bottom of my panel. And of course you can call this panel done and just stick it on top of a card base. Now I'm going to take it a step further and just like I did with the first card that I shared, I'm going to add some highlights. Again I'm going to use a paper stamp and uh, with fossilized amber I'm going to add some highlights on one side of my silhouettes. Another way to do that is uh, by using your white gel pen, but I didn't want those harsh white lines on the side and I wanted something softer. My card base is a standard card that's four and a quarter by five and a half that I have made out of uh, Tonic Studios uh, black velvet cardstock and I love that just because it has that beautiful satin finish on top and on the inside it's white so you can easily write your note and it comes in uh, so many different colors it's from their mirror collection so my card is ready I'm going to bring in the rest of the cards from the same set we don't celebrate Halloween in Greece so these three cards are going to a dear friend of mine as a set of three cards so she can decorate her house or hand them out to her friends so that was the card for today, I hope you had fun and got inspired, you will find links to the other two cards at the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching and for all the lovely comments, see you next time!